In this session, we'll be going over the types of acrylics that are available and the categories in which they come in order to create the artwork that you desire. Acrylic paints come in a variety of viscosities. For example, there's a heavy body paint that comes in jars or tubes. There's a fluid acrylic that requires less water in order to thin down. And then there's a product that Golden Paints has called High Flow, which is formerly their airbrush colors and can be used as an ink. However, for calligraphers, if you're using acrylics in a metal pen, I would highly recommend the ink products that are out there. The two most available products are FW and Liquitex inks. Aside from the acrylic colors, some of the different categories include gessos, mediums, gels, pastes, and grits. Now, gesso is just what it sounds like. A gesso is used to prepare a surface to accept paint without it soaking into the surface. Gessos in history traditionally were made with white lead and rabbit skin glue, but acrylic gessos are made with an acrylic polymer base and usually titanium white. These gessos dry to a brilliant white and allow a luminous effect when adding color over that brilliant white. Gessos also can be tinted either by hand or in pre-mixed jars. The most common tinted gesso is black gesso, although some companies do make colored gessos. After gessos comes something that we call mediums. Most artists are familiar with gloss or matte mediums. Depending on the effect that you want, a paint maker will add matting agents to a clear acrylic base product in order to get the sheen that you want in the effects that you're trying to achieve. So these mediums can come in gloss, satin, or matte, depending on the level of matting agents that are added. Matting agents simply take out much of the gloss they add just a bit more tooth and allow just a little bit more absorption. A byproduct of these mediums are gels. Gels were created for artists who wanted more texture in their paintings than the heavy body product could give. So a gel will allow an artist to mix a pigmented paint with a clear gel in order to get more texture for a palette knife or if they wanted to show brush strokes. These gels, as well, will come in gloss, satin, or matte. And so mixing the paint with certain ratios of gels will yield a certain level of transparency and body. After gels come pastes. Pastes have an interesting history. One of the reasons they were created is to lighten the actual weight in acrylic on a canvas. After World War II, when artists came back and they were painting huge paintings, if they used texture on a five foot wide canvas, the weight of the actual paint on the canvas would begin to cause that canvas to sag. They were looking for an alternative that was a lighter weight product that they could mix with their paint, still get texture, but not have the problems with canvases sagging or ripping. Pace were invented in order to fulfill this need. Another byproduct of pastes is that they create an opaque effect versus a translucent or transparent effect. So mixing your pigmented acrylic paint with a paste will yield not only texture in various levels, but also an opacity that might be desired for your work. Now, one of the most interesting paste products is called crackle paste. Crackle paste was as a result of a failed experiment in trying to get a paint film for an artist. In mixing these pastes, the golden scientists found that the film began to crack, and so they set it aside, they kept their notes, and they said, okay, that's a failed experiment, let's keep that for future reference. At a certain point in some meeting, somebody said, hey, there's some crazy artist who would love a crackle in their finish, and so they introduced crackle paste. And finally, to continue with those crazy artist stories come the grits. Grits are simply products that add texture to gels or pastes. And as artists look for more differing textures, the grains that they added to these gels and pastes were increased in size. 
So you have a fine or a gritty pumice product, for example, and you also have glass beads that have been added to these products. Another product that can be used is called a glazing liquid. Glazing liquids were developed in the early days of acrylics in order to mimic some of the effects that an oil painter would get by using layers and glazes. Glazing liquids dry just a little bit slower and allow a transparent or translucent effect. If you're an artist like me, I tend to mix my colors as I'm painting in layers rather than mixing the colors on a palette. So if, for example, I have a blue wash on a page, I may go over that with a more transparent wash of quinacridone gold or red. And as you look through that second layer, you've changed the color from blue to a combination of blue and the resulting layer. If you think of taking colored pieces of glass or plastic and putting them in layers over each other, you'll find that that's the similar effect of a glazing liquid. Instead of having the pigment particles lay flat on top of each other, there's a little bit of space because those particles now are suspended in a clear acrylic film. Therefore, there's a little bit more depth and a little bit more vibrancy using glazes than simply washing over thinned paint over another layer. Now in this course and for my techniques, because I'm writing quite a bit, I tend to stay away from the textures. Especially working in journals, we'll find that if you begin to add textures to a 30 or 40 page journal, eventually the pages are going to get so thick that the book won't close. So I will tend to use acrylics much more in a matter of watercolorist than a textured painter. So out of these products that we've talked about, we'll use thin layers, for example, of gesso. We'll use glazing liquid. We'll use thin washes. We may use some pastes, but in general, all of those applications will be fairly thin. In the next session, we'll go into a little bit more depth about opacity, viscosity, and layering and glazing within your journal work. We'll see you in the next session.